This is the Under the Ring Report. And now, the guys who make wrestling podcasting too sweet. John the Flesh Wound and Cousin Tom. We are back, wrestling fans. Welcome to the Under the Ring Report. With me as usual, Cousin Tom. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing fantastic. I'm ready for another exciting week of uh, wrestling podcast. I'm with you on that, man. Now, you know, last weekend, I had the pleasure of heading over to Oshkosh and uh, catching the... Um, ACW Wisconsin, that is the federation over here. They do Water City WrestleCon, and this was the second year they did it. I caught on t- last year a little too late, didn't get a chance to check it out, but uh, they had Bret Hart last year, a couple other big names showing up. So for for the size of the federation, it was, you know, not bad, but uh, right. took the trip, and uh, wow, 2,500 people showed up to watch a, an independent wrestling show. Not too bad for an independent wrestling show, I would say. No, and I mean, they had a plenty of stars there, too. I mean, they, they had MVP. They had Hurricane. Uh, they had the Sandman show up and do his shtick. Um, you also had Big Papa Pump, Scott Steiner, Ryback, and WWE Hall of Famer Jeff Jarrett show up there at the uh, show so a lot of star power for a show that size and um i was impressed oh and also one of the people actually runs it is the wrestler formerly known as hornswoggle he's from the oshkosh area and that's his federation that him and some of his friends run so i was impressed man they put on a good show brought my wife with me and you know she hadn't been to a wrestling probably in 25 years and she was actually into it she enjoyed oh joey ryan i forgot joey ryan was there too yeah that was yeah and uh she got into it she enjoyed it and and had a really good time too so that's all matters is people who really aren't wrestling fans as long as they dig it too that helps you out well and there's a lot to be said for the independent shows because there's a lot of people don't get a chance i know wwe goes all over the country i mean they're all over the place with two different shows yeah but if you live in a smaller town and these independent shows will have something and a lot of times they'll bring in a name draw to get you in the door Mm -hmm. and then it's just good quality entertainment the whole family can go you know unless it's something really hardcore (laughs) uh, pretty much the whole family can show up and uh, have a good time my hometown where i'm at now uh, just last year had uh, global force wrestling which Pretty much is now impact wrestling. Yeah. But they came to, we have a Frontier League baseball team here in town, and they came last summer, and I brought my youngest son, and uh, we went mainly to see Jeff Jarrett, and he brought along Kevin Nash. Cool. So they opened up the gates, Urban came in. They had all the tables set up. The meet and greets was all early on, so we got to meet Jeff Jer- Jeff and Karen Jarrett. Got a picture with them. Met Kevin Nash. Got a picture with him. He he stood up so my son could see what a seven footer looks like. So <laughs> the, you know he he's like, oh man, he's huge. And I you know I'm I'm six foot tall, and I felt like I was a thirteen year old kid standing next to an adult. Um, you, you don't appreciate their size until you're up next to them. But you know, and then we went down. We sat like three four rows from the ring. Had a great time. Hornswoggle was there. Yep. And, uh, you know, they put on a great, great show. Colt Cabana, he was there doing his stick. And uh, we had we just had a blast. And for, you know, under 50 bucks, the two of us had, you know, got pictures and meet and greet and everything else. You, you can't go wrong with independent wrestling. Yeah. And I think sometimes, you know, we have seen a big resurgent in independent wrestling, you know, because there was some pretty low years there for a while. But I think right now, if you're looking for any type of wrestling, I mean, you can't go wrong. Going to this w- was great because, you know what, I got a chance to meet Scott Steiner. That was pretty darn cool. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and you know, you can do the whole, we we read about it last few weeks, people at the WrestleMania doing the WrestleCons. And, and some of those can be difficult. You know, number one, it could be pricey for you. It could be hard because the amount of lines and stuff waiting for you. So sometimes if you really want to meet some of these guys, it might be better to wait until they come to a smaller venue. And it's easier. You don't have to wait in line as long. You also have a little more one-on-one time instead of just being like in an assembly line where they run in and out real quick you actually can have a chance to actually talk for a couple minutes with some of these guys which is pretty cool too yeah well you know and speaking of that there's all kinds of local promotions here in uh, marion illinois where i'm at uh, we actually have a local promotion stride pro wrestling mm-hmm. and uh, they actually host events they, they've hosted events at different locations but uh, at our local mall they've hosted events uh, they just had james ellsworth here, oh really uh, a few weeks back yeah and then and uh, not too far down the road from me is uh, Cape Girardeau, and they have, uh, it's called Cape Championship Wrestling, and they just hosted what they called Super Show 2 
this past weekend, and they were able to bring in uh, Tommy Dreamer, Hangman Page, and James Storm. <laughs> and you uh, missed that. And I missed it. Well, I had other things. Oh, prior. yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Know, you. you know, so they're 45 minutes down the road from me, and I know I can't be alone seeing these things. Uh, mm-hmm. I know Tommy Dreamer's house of hardcore. He's all over the place. Well, he was just promoting. he was just here in Wisconsin, probably about two and a half hours from me in December, and did something down there with Great Lakes Wrestling, which is kind of the, the big thing near Milwaukee and stuff, and they bring a lot of those stars, and they brought in Kevin Nash, Scott Hall before. Each year, though, they do a Blizzard Con, is kind of what it is and it has different names but this last year was the first time it was affiliated with tommy dreamer and his house of hardcore and they had all kinds of guys showed up there pretty good show but like you said i mean i look across here in wisconsin there's at least five to six pretty big federations that do some pretty good stuff there's a place called national federation of wrestling and they kind of run michigan and upper wisconsin they've got sabu coming in next month and you know as i start looking through to see who's showing up i kind of forget and i'm like oh you know, I've always wanted to see this guy. Maybe I should make the hour drive just to check him out. You know, I mean, we've had little federations where like at the local mall, they brought in Al Snow and Billy Gunn to wrestle before. Back in, back when he was doing a lot of wrestling, Greg the Hammer Valentine wrestled at our high school here. Before his heart attack, Coco Beware wrestled in a bar down in Stevens Point. So you see those happen all the time. And even 15, 20 years before that, I remember Ken Patera ran a little thing where he'd bring all his stars through a lot of times they run them through the casinos up here because up in wisconsin we have a lot of casinos and that's a pretty easy draw once a year one of them hosts just nothing but a bunch of old timers coming to town right like i said that's great entertainment if you're just looking for family fun a couple guys that you used to remember get a chance to see him again you saw scott steiner the next night on a pay-per-view <laughs> he does a frankensteiner at 55 years of age which uh-huh. is freaking amazing well, and I'll tell you. Like, it looked from the little gif they showed like he killed himself when he landed. But uh, but you know what, though? The thing, right. here's the thing is with Scott Steiner, too. And I think a lot of people forget this. He almost died nine years ago. And I don't, do yeah. you, have you heard the story? You know what? I've heard little bits, but not, I'm really not familiar with it but too much. Well, he was wrestling in Puerto Rico. All right. And something I don't know the whole story, but something happened where he had a rip in, I believe, his trachea, but not like in the normal spot. It was down in inside of him and he only had a few hours to live. And they actually had to split him open and repair it to save his life. And yeah, see, I had I hadn't heard yeah, that at all. I, he had taken somehow or another in a wrestling move something. He got kicked or something, and just a freak freak accident. But they saved his life, and without that, he probably would have just died. And so. I look at that, too, and to think that he's wrestling that well at 55 and he's still wrestling for a big company on TV, but still shows up there. And you know what? He put on a great show, too. He did his moves. He did his thing on the mic real quick. Everything you want to see from Scott Steiner, he pretty much did it and the crowd loved it. Yeah. You know, when I saw online last night, I guess it was last night night before when he did the Frankensteiner, my first thought was this guy's you know, I saw online, they said he's 55. Yeah. My first thought was, I remember watching Flair. Flair wasn't doing Frankensteiners at 55. No. <laughs> but you know what, you know, though? There, there's a whole other level of uh, he's athleticism a, going on. He's a genetic freak, okay? That's all there is to it. He is a genetic freak. But, yeah, it was it was great to see him, and, and that's what I make sure to tell people out there. You can go to the big WWE things when they come to town. Most of the time, they're going to show up in your area once a year, pretty much like clockwork. Work. We're, we're lucky here because from where I'm at, we're about an hour and 40 minutes from Green Bay. Every year we either get Raw or we get SmackDown. And then we either get one or the other down in Milwaukee. So, I mean, if you want to make the trek, you've got them kind of far. But it's usually show up, sit in your seat, watch the show and then go home. Really no yeah, interaction, so you, you know. And I'm I'm fortunate. I'm I'm down here in Southern Illinois, which uh, <clears throat> for people listening, I am nowhere near Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Chicago is the whole opposite end. I am all the way down in the bottom of the state, but I have Missouri, Kentucky, and Indiana, which I can get to any of those states in pretty much less than an hour. Mm-hmm. I can be in St. Louis in two hours. There's always well, as a matter of fact, I think there are. Raw is there tonight in St. Louis. It is, yeah, that's uh, right. Last summer, my son had a travel ball uh, baseball tournament, and it happened to be the weekend of Money in the Bank. And guess where they were? 
Yep. We were in St. Louis, yep. and that's where we were for travel ball. We've been, we've ran over to Evansville, we've ran Cape, we've, you know, <clears throat> we've hit up all the points in between. But still, the most fun we've had was in our own backyard when it was just a little local promotion. Well, and and that's the thing nowadays. There's so many people, especially with the internet, you know, social media. You know, a guy like Joey Ryan. Do you think he would have been as well known 20 years ago? Probably, no, probably no. not. But you know what? Because of what he did on the internet and with Twitch and YouTube youtube and social media and being part of being on the, the the elite youtube show he is probably one of the biggest stars right now and to have him in a town like oshkosh performing you know and i didn't think i'd get a chance to see him until maybe when we went to all in if he was going to be part of that right and so that to me was really cool you know you think about these stars that to some people if all they do is follow wwe they, they don't know anything outside of wwe and they're missing a lot when it comes to that you know i mean you've got ring of honor running around and truthfully i have to give impact wrestling some props too because since they've kind of done the old throw everything away start f- start fresh their shows are starting to get better i mean seeing that pentagon jr is now the champion I- i'm <laughs> digging these things that i've that, that right there made me go oh i may have to turn this on you know i their cross promotion with lucha underground which mm-hmm. i was a fan of lucha underground oh yeah that drew me in and a lot of those people that were on lucha underground the first couple seasons you know you see them in other promotions and they all start you know it's lucha underground which is basically an independent it was a t TV show. They didn't know what they were doing. Yeah. That was the funny part about it. But if you think about all those people, they've all ended up at one or the other. Joey Ryan, Ricochet, all those guys have doing something. Cage is becoming a big star in Impact. Oh, yeah. You know, I remember watching him when he first they had the little tournament and he won the gauntlet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm impressed yeah. by that. And that's why I say is if you have a federation near you, get out there, check it out. You know what? Trust me. Not every time they do a show is going to be great. Some of these are going to be bingo halls and bars with just the local guys, but support them because the more you support them, that means they've got the money the next time to maybe bring in somebody that you really want to see. Well, and that's that's the, the cool part about it. That and the other draw to me is I go back to, and this is before, you know, you had to really, really look to find different things other than WCW or yeah. WWE. But I used to always like to be the guy that found, caught on to something early I was the I remember when guy like with music. Mm-hmm. I remember when mm-hmm. you know they were they were the opening band and nobody knew them. Yeah, and and I you know I can go I can go back. I'm old enough. I can go back with pretty much Chris Jericho's whole career when he was just a baby face coming out, plopping down in the crowd and and basically having <laughs> you know he was stuck to the cruiserweight division with nobodies you know and then watch him go all the way through the ranks and all the way up you know to where he is today and it's like it's fun being able to go back and say I remember you know when he just came over from ECW and I remember him in ECW when he came from Japan and well. And you know what the other cool thing, too, is especially with you and your sons, you know, if you get a chance to catch somebody that you remember in your heyday, that they aren't part of TV, you know, they're they're still doing the the weekly tours coming out on the weekends to take them and, and bring your son and go, you know what, this is someone I watched when I was your age and this is why. And then they can see. You know, because those guys can do it one more time. They don't have to do it all the time like they used to. But when they hit those places on the weekend, most of those guys still got that ability to hit the four or five spots that make everybody go ooh and ah. I mean, perfect example, Sandman was at the event. He didn't wrestle. I mean, the, the guy's been through hell. I mean, he's a hardcore icon, but... Oh, my gosh, I feel bad if the guy had to actually wrestle. He has a hard time moving. You think of all the crazy shit he did in ECW, but you know what? No one cared. Music hit, came through the crowd, chugged a bunch of beer, gave beer to other people, showed up in the middle of the rain, caned a guy, and that was it. People left happy because that's what they remember about the Sandman. Yep. 20 years later, still doing the same thing but that's what you pay to see Mm -hmm. and that's what i'm saying is those are the cool things is you know we could have a guy and perfect example is a hulk hogan rick flair what have you who show up on monday night raw and look out of place because they're old 
they they're standing next to these young bucks and and they're not gonna be able to wrestle they can't go and you're just like oh or you can show up at these shows where they're usually wrestling a lot of people who are just trying to get a get a start in wrestling and it helps the kids out because they're wrestling against an established star who teaches them plus they get a chance to go back to their heyday and do all their moves and that makes everybody happy you know i love going to smaller shows it's a lot of fun you you know you get there it's not a lot to get in the door and there's not all the pomp and circumstance but there's still the basic reason why you're there and that's just to watch a couple of guys in the ring tell a story have a good match entertain a few folks and go home happy there you go man all right well that is our uh, take on independent wrestling like we said if you get a chance check out your local independent federation support them because they're doing a lot of great things out there and you may just not know it but there could be a gold mine sitting in your backyard so as we've been talking about my trip last weekend to see acw wrestling i thought it'd be kind of cool to talk to my wife who actually came with me not a big wrestling fan and i think she had fun so let's talk to her first before we talk about the trip what type of history if any have you had with professional wrestling oh you mean other than wandering through the living room or the family room when you've had it on tv yeah but what i mean though is have you been to any other live wrestling event in your time yeah i have i've been to one and it was a big one and of course i didn't really understand it at the time but um i saw hulk hogan I saw the Bushwhackers, and I saw my favorite wrestler of all time, Erwin R. Scheister. And you saw them during the heyday of WWF, correct? Yeah, I sure did. And it was in Sergeant Slaughter, too. I can't forget him. Okay. So that's pretty impressive. Yeah. But um, so going into our trip, what did you think you were going to experience? (laughs) Um, so what did I think I was going to experience? So first of all, let me say this. ACW Water City Rescon was awesome. (laughs) It really was. I had such a great time. But what was I expecting? Well, I did tell you that I wasn't going to go and with any expectations except to have a good time and embrace what it was. So that's what I did. And I really did have a good time. I wasn't expecting what we got. I was expecting a much smaller crowd, a much smaller venue, um, a level of wrestling that was subpar. Um, But I found none of those things to be true. This was very professionally done. It was a big, well-attended, wonderful event. And I had a great time. So what I think is funny is is you had kind of your picks on each match and who you kind of cheered for. Mm -hmm. And and I had to laugh because we watched the big battle royal. Yes. And and what did who did you pick? Well, so the battle royale, (laughs) (laughs) I think I, I, I have a, a thing about wrestlers who wear shirts with collars in the ring because my pick was Levi Yoder, the <laughs> Amish wrestler. And I really do think it's because he was wearing a shirt with a collar, just like Erwin R. Scheister. So I, I think I figured it out. Okay. And I tried to brush you up a little bit on some of the history and some of the mm-hmm. wrestlers. You did. So, so what did you think of Joey Ryan? Oh, <laughs> That's what I thought of Joey Ryan. He is something else, man. Um, He really, he's an entertainer. Um, I love his gimmick so, so, so much. Um, He really put on a show for the fans. And um, what I was left with is what you had told me about how some people just don't quite get it. Mm Mm-hmm. And I, I'm glad you clued me in. Um, I think I would have found him hysterical anyway. But having you give me a little uh, primer on what he's all about really made it that much more enjoyable for me. And then we also got to see the four on four tag match. And it was funny how you started telling me information about the wrestlers, because I noticed that it got to the point where you were chatting with the people in front of us, behind uh-huh, us, uh-huh. kind of getting the the inside scoop on some of these people that that I didn't know either, because they were must have been local favorites because they were from the Oshkosh area. Yeah, well, and I hope I'm saying his name right. But Chris Bauer, obviously, B-A-U-J-G-H-E-R. Um, he really got a big bump from the crowd, man. People enjoyed him a lot. Um, Mm -hmm. And um, something I've never seen before, you told me it's pretty commonplace. He picked up two people and body slammed them, Uh which I thought was cooler than anything I've ever seen in my whole life. But (laughs) 
<laughs> and that was also the first time you saw the hurricane. Yeah, first time I'd seen the hurricane, and he was cool too. First time I'd seen a lot of those guys, but it was it was super cool. Yep. And then we got to someone that you remember because you were actually sort of at least tolerant of wrestling during <laughs> WCW days because you liked the luchadors. I did. I love the luchadors, but I certainly do remember Big Papa Pump. <laughs> and so that was really great. He came out there, did his shtick, and it seemed like the crowd there had a great time. Oh, yeah. Well, and Jeff Jarrett, too. I remember Jeff Jarrett. And uh, all I can say is that I, you know, those are some pretty big names to be in Oshkosh, Wisconsin on a Saturday. And I would so do it again. Just really, really, really well done by the ACW. Well, that's what I was going to ask you as your last question. Are you up for another trip sometime down the line? Uh, yeah, I am. <laughs> it was really great. <laughs> My God, it's a hot tag! All right, Tom, time now to hit the hot tags. You ready? I'm ready. All right, I'm going to go with one that was very topical. Bruno San Martino. Yeah, I was uh, sorry to hear of his passing. I mean, the man still looked great in his 80s. Mm -hmm. Like he could, you know, still get in the ring and go, even though, you know, at that age he wasn't going to. I, unfortunately, was a little late to the party on, on Bruno. Uh, you know, I wasn't old enough to really appreciate what he all you know what he accomplished and everything mm -hmm. but still hate to hear of his passing i mean he was he was a a, le a legend in the wrestling ring Yep. And you know what? The one good thing is at least the WWE and him made peace finally and he got put into the WWE Hall of Fame. That was yeah, the one that was thing true. that that luckily that finally happened because, you know, there'd been that rift there for quite a while. And it's good to see that. And he took his rightful place where he should be. All right. Uh, I'm going to go with Pentagon Jr. <laughs> Impact Impact Champion. You know, if you would have told me this six months ago, I would have laughed at you. I, I watched their match. Thank you, Alberto Patron, for not showing up. But at WrestleMania weekend, I watched that on, on Twitch, and I just sat there and went, wow, this match is going to be so awesome at the pay-per-view. And, and you know what? Pentagon's had his ups and downs, you know, with, with AAA wrestling and stuff and a little fighting in there and stuff where he's had to wrestle in the indies under a different name. But... Right. Um, Still, the guy is phenomenal. I'm glad he's finally getting the recognition from everyone because you remember them those first couple seasons of Lucha Underground. He was seriously one of the top stars coming out of that because the funny thing was in AAA wrestling, he was like a low mid carter. He wasn't even considered a big star. Yeah, so that, that last season of Lucha Underground, he was the guy. Yeah. And that's what I think is so awesome is that took Lucha Underground the way he grabbed the ball, ran with it, and, and became this big star. Now here he is running as the champion of Impact Wrestling. And, and you know what? I'm looking forward to seeing him at All In. I can't wait for that. I love his gimmick. Yeah. I think that gimmick is awesome. You know, all the luchadors have masks. He's done something to make his look different. The whole zero miedo, no fear. Just, <laughs> I just love it. Yep. All right, man. Here's my next one for you. It's a sad thing, but Nikki. And John Cena breaking up. Well, when I first heard it, I thought, is this a work? That's the first <laughs> thing I thought, you know, that was the first part. Second thing I thought was, man, Cena, you really know how to screw a WrestleMania moment. <laughs> 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 so but you, you give her a WrestleMania moment and now you take it away. You know, six years, I really never cared either way. <laughs> uh, that's just me. You know, I'm, I'm sure there's people that are hooked on Total Divas and everything else that are Total Bellas and just ate that stuff up. But uh, to each their own, that's what I say. Well, there you go, man. All right. Bobby Lashley. What do you think about Bobby Lashley? You know what? I really don't care. <laughs> I know a lot of, well, I mean, seriously, <laughs> a lot of the internet was hyped up about his return, but I can honestly say I really haven't followed much of what he's done since he left WWE. I mean, I, I've seen little bits and pieces in TNA and heard about the MMA try, but I don't know. I, I never was a big fan of Bobby's, even when he was in WWE, because I thought my main problem with Bobby Lashley is he's built for the part, but he can't speak. Mm -hmm. When he starts talking, you're like, I mean, you know what I mean? It's Mike Tyson, but he's not intimidating like Mike Tyson. And that was my one problem with Bobby Lashley is 
When he opened his mouth, all the intimidation to me was gone, and and it just kind of made me say, I really don't care about this character. Yeah, he came off as a not intimidating when he talked, or kind of like a nice guy. You yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's well, I kind of had the same thoughts there too. I just didn't really follow that much of him, so I I just happened to look at my TV and I see he's tagging with Strowman, and I thought, yeah, I'll ask you see what you see what your thoughts are. All right, man. Well, that's gonna do it for this week's show. Thanks a lot for joining us here on the Under the Ring Report. Hey, this is Shark Boy, and you're listening to the. Under the Ring Report. Follow the Under the Ring Report on Twitter at UTRR Podcast. You can subscribe to the Under the Ring Report on iTunes, Google Play, and Stitcher, or visit UnderTheRingReport.com. Thanks for listening to the Under the Ring Report.